me being Shaq's son, I feel like anywhere I go, any type of sport I play, like they're always gonna bring his name sure. into it. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm my own person. I don't need to try to feel his footsteps. I want to be better than him. Master, no doubt. Master, yeah, I want to be you better should. than him. As you should. I want people going up to him being like, oh, that's Reese's dad. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a goal of mine, so. Draft day. Draft day. Five years later, how am I the man still in the game? The big question is for me, I feel like people are saying, is he even ready? And you know, I went to the elite camp. I really risked the first day of be a learning experience and see what everybody was doing, see what I could do differently, because I'm like, I need to stand out. So you know, the second day, you know, I was like, I got to get mine out, out, out the muscle. I just got a double-double, like the first camp, first and only camp double-double off of finding the ball, rebounding, and going straight back up. And, you know, that stood out. You know, that got me some work opportunities with some teams. I remember when I got drafted, it was 90, 1999. Oh, my goodness, a long time ago. 1999. <laughs> I remember having, like, 30, like, maybe, like, 32 or $35 in my pocket, and I was with Baron Davis. <laughs> right before the draft, we was ironing <laughs> dollar bills. Because we was like, yo, things might change. Yeah. Be short of Christmas. For sure. So we was like iron, ironing like single dollars. <laughs> it was kind of, it was like a lot of stuff like that. And then also not knowing if I was ready. I didn't know if I could play. I didn't know if I could hang. You know, you got Shaq in the league. You got Mitch Richmond was coming out of his prime. Stack house. You got all these players. And you just like, where do you fit in? You know, so I knew it was hard work. But I was a little bit concerned at, at, at the beginning. But then as I got into it, it got a little bit better. Yeah, I got drafted in 2011. I was the, the 60th pick, so I was the last pick in the draft. <laughs> but going into the draft process, I honestly felt like I couldn't do nothing more in college to raise my stock. That's why I was like, man, I got a year. I got a year left, but I might as well just, you know, try to put all into my dream and see where it takes me. So it landed me at the 60th pick, which is crazy because it was the longest day of my life. <laughs> I just I just kept seeing names go that I felt like I dominated in the draft process when I worked out. So it was it was frustrating, but it, you know when my when I got my name called, it was like, you know, the best feeling in the world. No matter if it was the first pick or the last pick, it was like I always dreamed of getting my name called by the commissioner. Like how has the experience been for you being, you know, Shaquille O'Neal's son as well? Like going to college, going to LSU where your dad went, you know, trying to kind of get out of his footsteps and create your own? Because I'm asking because I got kids now, too, yeah. so I, I want to be able to prepare them kind of like your dad and your, your your parents prepared yourself for the life that you're, you know, you're about to live. Um, I would say, you know, my parents did a good job of not comparing. Well, actually, my dad, he's going to compare us to his dad. <laughs> my dad, but he would always make us work out with somebody else. Like, he would do his own workouts with us, but he was like, nah, I can't, I can't train y'all because I, I only know one way to play. He's like, y'all need, <laughs> need to learn how to shoot, dribble, all that. So For real. He told us a long time ago that people his size were going to be bringing up the ball and all that. I don't know how he knew that, but he, he said crazy. that when I was about seven or eight years old. He said, you're not going to be like me. He's going to be shooting threes and, and bringing the ball up. And he, he was always telling us to watch. Like, everything I want to do is just, I always think about basketball. I, know, I, always, I just told him, like, you told me to make my own decisions. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, as, as parents, like, they respect when you, when they, when they understand that you're growing up. Like, yeah. you're making a decision, you know, for your future and what you feel that you're ready for. That whole heart surgery situation, you know, I feel like that made my drive for basketball, like, even more. I feel like it made me even hungrier because, you know, I, when I was in high school, I was, a, I was the number one player in California for, uh, my senior year, and... You know, the adrenaline going to UCLA, you know, I was like, oh, hometown hero, I'm, I'm in L.A., I'm about to play at UCLA. Like, a few months before the season started, you know, they told me I couldn't play because it's like a, a surgery I had to get. And, you know, I had to, I couldn't lift my arms up past, like, my shoulders for, I think, seven months, couldn't carry anything over seven pounds for, like, five months, and it took, like, a year and a half for it to get healed. So, you know, I couldn't touch a basketball, you know, I, I couldn't even watch practice, you know, it made me so mad. I had to stop going to the game because, you know, I was just so hurt. Like, it was more of a mental thing for me at that point. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just a way of life telling me that, you know, we're throwing this at you, we're going to see what you do. I remember seeing you when you came, when you came to the house and you said, could I have surgery too? I had surgery when I was 23. And my agent was like, yo, you're going to have to get this surgery. I'm like, what surgery? He said, heart surgery. I said, how long am I going to be out? He said, like, you know, like a year and a half. 
Then they came up with the surgery. They went through my thigh. It was crazy. They came up with the surgery where they went through an artery in my thigh and put a little, a little aluminum mushroom and closed up the hole. You know, and yeah, so I was like, I was back in like two days from being out a year and a half. So I remember having that scare, you know? I did, you know, I have a stint right here in my heart now. But you, you obviously went through something really, yeah. really tough. I remember seeing your face, I was like, wow. Yeah. I don't know what I would have done, but you, you had now. Well, you know, I was scared to come back and play basketball. That first time mm -hmm. I came back, yeah, I was terrified. I felt Were my you heart. Were you scared to get hit and stuff? I was scared to get hit once my, once my heart started racing, you know, I was practicing with my little brother's 16U team, and we was just playing fives and all that, and my heart started racing, you know, I, I panicked. That was the first time my heart was beating that fast since for like a year and a half, you know, I panicked, and you know, I had to get over it mentally for the first few months, and you know, I hadn't played organized basketball since my state championship game, and I came back, my first game was a, a college yeah. game at UCLA. Yeah, like, different. Yeah. You know, yeah. one, thinking about it at the time, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm about to come back, I'm about yeah. to ball out, like, Nah, I think I should have took another year out. And when I went to the combine, you know, they they made me do a stress test because they seen all the all my medical records. And you know, I understand that's gonna be life. I'm gonna have to yeah. do stress tests and prove that my heart is fine. But you know, I did that, got it out the way. I think it was like 14 and a half that's minutes. So you know, I was like, I was like, I'm about to show everybody. I, can't, <laughs> I, I, I want this. So yeah, you know. man, that's amazing. That's amazing for you to even you know be here today and. For me, I had one major injury where I hurt my hip, but like before that, I never had a major injury where I, other than like a sprained ankle. I think once you get past, you know, those mental hurdles, you know, it eases up your mind to be able to keep going. But it's easier said than done. That was the toughest time of my life. And I think for you, you went through, you know, life or death situation to where like nothing you go through now is gonna, is gonna come close to what you already been through. Yeah. I think lasting in the NBA is work, how you take care of your body. I know my first couple of years was rough. I had a real, I was just partying all the time. But then when I stopped that, like my body started to, it felt better. I remember I used to get out the bed. I don't know if y'all had this happen to y'all. You working out hard in the summertime and you, you, know, you take that first step out the bed, the bottom of your feet hurt, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the yeah, bottom yeah. of your feet hurt, for real. <laughs> but my body wasn't hurting. I was able to get up right away. Really, really took my game to the next level. You know what I'm saying? I was like practicing and things started to really, they started to work. I went into it wanting to party versus going into it like, yo, I'm gonna be the best player I could be. I'm gonna do 20 years. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a championship. I'm gonna get an MVP and you know, everything else comes around it. For me, I think the biggest thing for me, I love hoop so much that I was, I was in the gym no matter what. So nobody had to tell me that. Label for me was obviously I'm too small. In high school, he's not gonna be able to do the things he did in high school and college. Then they said the same thing when I was able to dominate college, they said that about the NBA. And knowing what people are saying, but also using it as motivation and prove people wrong. And then when I got older, it wasn't really about proving people wrong no more. It was really about just proving myself right. Because I, th I think at a young age for me, it was so bottled up in me to, to just be so mad at everybody that said I was too short or too small to play. And now it's like, I just smile about it because it's like, I, I've showed you, I've, you know, I'm able to play at a high level for a long time. Yeah. I don't got to prove to you guys anything anymore. You know, that was a process for me to, you know, understand. But when I did, it was able to open up my mind and make shit even easier for me. You know, hopefully summer league comes and I have a great time. You know, I feel like this, this whole year, I just like, I just see like great things ahead. So it's going to happen for you. Yeah. Oh man, you know I had to do it for you. You know I had to do it for you, yeah. Suits and ties yelling out, pay the guys, man, I had to do it for you.